So your presenters today, uh, we have Mike McBride. He's the Director of Outreach and Undergraduate Student Recruitment, 30 plus, 40 years at ASU. Um, so great wealth of knowledge for you. Uh, my name is Kaylee Graham. I am the Associate Director for Outreach and Student Recruitment for you admitted students to Fulton. You've probably received quite a few emails from me. Um, and so you have my email if you have any questions. Um, and then we have Nina Lohman, who is also part of our outreach and recruitment team. Um, and so she, Mike, and I will be answering a lot of your questions alongside our current student ambassadors. Um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves briefly, and then they have more time um, later in the session to go into more detail about their experience as well. With that, Emily, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Emily Haygood, a sophomore in materials engineering with a minor in sustainability. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, and I'm heavily involved in Fulton programs and student organizations, so I'm happy to answer any questions about being an out-of-state student or any of these programs during the Q&A later. Thank you. And Kai? Hi, everyone. My name is Kai Troop. I'm a sophomore studying unmanned aerial systems on the Polytechnic campus, and I have a minor in business. And I'm involved in a couple of on-campus uh, organizations, and it's nice to be here. Thanks, Kai. And Maggie. Hello, my name is Maggie. I'm also an out-of-state student um, from Texas. I'm majoring in biomedical engineering with a minor in biochemistry. Again, I'm heavily involved in a lot of Fulton programs um, and research, and I'd love to talk about those later. Awesome. So again, if you are just joining, because I see some people adding, we'd like you to join Paradeck at joinpd.com and utilize this code. Otherwise, Nina um, ha is also dropping a direct link into the chat for you. Now, we, now that you've heard a little bit about us, we would like to learn a little bit more about all of you in our session today. Um, so yes, this is primarily for admitted students, but sometimes ninth through 11th grade students slip in there. Um, or if you're a transfer student um, coming to ASU or a parent or a family member, sometimes we get counselors in these sessions. Um, if you can go ahead and indicate that to us, that would be really helpful. Oh, fabulous. Some parents. Hi, parents. Awesome. Perfect. So um, we'd also like to know where you're from. Um, so if you can use your flag and hover over your state or area on the globe in which you are currently residing. Um, while I go over this slide, that would be great. Love to see so many flags, so exciting. So um, while y'all are doing that, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about um, where we are located, our campuses, just to give a little bit more context. Um, so as you see on this map, um, we have this Arizona pop out. ASU is located in Phoenix, Arizona, in case you didn't know. Um, and we are located in the, primarily in the Metro Phoenix area. Um, and so if you look at this gold uh, rectangle in the bottom, you can see that there are uh, multiple dots that indicate ASU's campuses. ASU does have the four main campuses, um, but the programs in the Fulton Schools of Engineering are housed at the Tempe campus and the Polytechnic campus. Um, our programs are campus-based, which you might have figured out already. So when you picked your program that told you what campus you would be housed at, that's your academic home and your residential home. You do not have to leave your campus to complete your degree, but we encourage you to do so. Um, with ASU's model, you can get a multi-campus experience. You can travel to any of ASU's campuses. Um, there's a free shuttle that goes between the four main campuses. You can join student organizations at different campuses. Um, you can do research at a different campus, get a student job, uh, just visit for events, or you can even take classes or pick up a minor um, or maybe a certificate at another campus. So you really can get a multi-campus experience. All of our campuses do have different feels, different vibes, um, and you can explore those um, through our website, either the Fulton website or the ASU Visit website. Um, I did see a question scroll through the chat. Um, about how it feels to be in a classroom space and what that feels like to have students on campus. I would encourage you to go to um, that toolkits website that Mike linked in there, go to the visit page and watch the college tour. So we were very lucky uh, to be part of Amazon's um, show, the college tour at ASU. Um, and there are clips um, or you could watch the full one hour series of the different campuses and students at those campuses. Um, and so you can see what those students 
names are and what their degree programs are and what campus each segment is at and you can get a better feel for what it's like to be a student um, at ASU if you're not able to come in person. And for those of you that haven't come in person yet, our team is offering on campus tours as a lot of people figured out this week. Um, you can get our registration information again through that toolkit link that Mike provided. Um, the visits are by registration only um, right now, and so we offer them Monday through Friday with our staff and our students. And um, we would encourage you to come get a tour. They are single family tours. Um, COVID precautions are still in place on campus, so masks, um, social distancing, and all those great things. Um, but you can come visit us if you want to. You'll see Nina, Mike myself, some of our students there on campus. It looks like we have a good range of students all over, student international students, lots of California students. That's where I'm from. I always love to see the Cali kids. Um, lots of Phoenix, it's like all the way up the East Coast. I hate to tell you guys, but even though it's kind of overcast today, it's still like 70 something degrees over here. Um, yesterday it was like 80 degrees. Um, so come join us. The weather is great. It's a great place to be and a great time to visit. Um, so this slide does have a lot of information. You're probably like, wow, why would Kaylee do this to us? Well, it's because there's a lot of really cool facts and information about who we are as a college at ASU on this slide. So what I would ask you to do is to take a second, kind of glance through some of these stats and factoids that you see and hover over the one that speaks the most to you, um, maybe surprises you the most, that you find really interesting. Um, and so for me, um, as a female in STEM, I love to see that representation in our staff and faculty and students. So we have a very large number of female students and female faculty within the Fulton Schools of Engineering. It's definitely something that we're really proud of. And we're always trying to make sure that we have a diverse student population at ASU and within our college for our students. Um, this is just fun watching. <laughs> little compasses go everywhere. Um, another factoid that we're really proud of is we are the number one largest and most comprehensive school of engineering in the nation. And we are proud of that for a lot of reasons. Um, one of the biggest reasons is that engineering programs are really expensive to run. You need to have a lot of resources, a lot of hands-on experience, a lot of support and opportunities available to you. And because we are so large, we are able to offer that to our students in many different ways many different communities of uh, support and opportunity for you. Um, also, I don't know if you're all like 100% set on your degree program, but we do tend to see movement across our engineering disciplines when students come to ASU. And one thing that's great about going to a school that's large and has a lot of programs is that uh, the likelihood of you finding the degree program that fits you um, and being able to customize that experience is a very high likelihood if you're in a large university and that's something our students are able to do even from the brief glimpse of what you saw from our three students here you can see academically they've customized their experience by adding minors um, or double majors and then things they do outside of the classroom they've really customized and made their own experience and because of our size we're able to offer that to our students um, we also have a lot of research funding we have a lot of funding for entrepreneurship and innovation. I really do like that stat that says, um, if we were our own university, we would be ranked number 27 um, for universities that have the highest number of utility patents. And that's just within our college. Students, faculty, staff even um, have patents. And so there are really a lot of opportunities for you here at ASU and especially in the Fulton schools. Um, now, these are just some of our numbers from uh, fall 20. As I didn't mention, we have a lot of degree programs. So we have 25 undergraduate disciplines and 24 concentrations. A concentration is something that you would see show up on your degree, on your diploma. Um, for those of you who have been admitted and have a concentration, it might say something like BSc in aerospace, and then in parentheses, it would say astronautics, um, aeronautics. Um, some programs require you to choose the concentration. Some are just options, um, but it's another way that you can customize your experience. Um, and we have actually, we're growing over 46 uh, graduate programs that we offer within the Fulton Schools, which is a really great opportunity for students. We have two main campuses plus online um, as well. And so our students are able to take classes in a variety of different modalities as well. Now, this is a big one that I think is going to answer some of those questions that are in the chat, and then I might cover a couple of those questions while we're on this slide. 
Um, but this is what we call our eye chart. This is how we organize our college. We have the six schools of engineering, the first five based at the Tempe campus. The sixth school, the Polytechnic School, is based at our Polytechnic campus. Um, some of you, so most of you who've been admitted should probably have also received a letter not only from our dean, but also from your school of engineering, from your director or your program chair um, of your degree program. Each of these schools has its own school directors and program chairs. We don't have siloed departments. Um, it's really important for students who are in the engineering and tech fields to have an interdisciplinary experience. And by grouping our programs into schools, this way, we're able to offer that to our students. They also have degree specific advising. So I saw a question about advising um, in the Q&A. And yes, you will have an advisor who is specific to your degree program within the Fulton Schools of Engineering. And if you are in the Honors College, you will also have an Honors Advisor as well. So multiple advisors for you. Um, you will meet with your advisor during your college session um, of the new student experience, what we'll talk about a little bit later, um, but they are a great resource for you as you explore the disciplines. Um, again, I mentioned before, a lot of students are gonna change their major when they come to college and we understand that in Fulton. Um, and so as long as you decide between your first year, year and a half, you really do have flexibility to move across the schools um, without impacting how long it will take you to, to complete your degree. It's just something that you would work with an academic advisor um, on if you do decide to switch, um, or if you decide to add an additional program. So I know some students are interested in double majors, minors, certificates, whether within the Fulton Schools or across ASU, and it is definitely possible um, to add another major. You need to make sure you establish a good ASU GPA first. Um, and then you would work with your academic advisor to come up with a plan on how you would complete both degrees at the same time um, and work with advising to declare the second major. So you wouldn't declare it until you come to ASU. Um, I mentioned how easy it is to switch. I'm trying to think if there's any other degree questions on here. Nope. Um, so some things that you'll notice, and again, as I'm over here, if you want to hover over your school of engineering or your degree program um, that you've been admitted to, um, one of the really great things about our programs is you'll see in your curriculum that you will take courses that have course prefixes and other degrees and even in other colleges at ASU. Again, an interdisciplinary experience is the goal. Um, and so we want to make sure that you're not siloed and so that when you graduate or you go work in internships and research, that you have that experience of working in teams outside of your discipline. Um, and that's one way that we're able to accomplish this for our students. So I see, I mean, we've got everyone in all six schools, which is really exciting to see in here. Um, if you have any questions and you haven't asked one yet, please feel free um, to add your questions in the Q&A and we'll answer them as we go through the slides. Um, I know some of you probably are still trying to decide on your major and that's okay. You don't have to have like your life figured out right now as I'm sure some of the ambassadors will share. I see Emily smiling. Um, so these are just some questions that we usually walk through with our students. Your advisors might walk through you as you're exploring programs. Um, you know, some of our programs have more of a business or a management bent to them like construction management and technology, engineering management, industrial engineering has got a little bit of business in there. Um, some of our programs are heavier in the programming languages, and so that might help sway your decision if you really want heavy programming or you don't want heavy programming languages. Some people, it's as easy as a campus choice. Um, some at times it's asking what types of questions you like to solve or what you want to do post graduation. Um, that can also help you decide. And there's a variety of different types of things that you can be doing right now and even in the summer, and even when you come to ASU to help you navigate your programs a little bit more. Um, on our website, we have videos for each of the disciplines. They're linked in that toolkit link Mike has provided. I'm going to talk about major maps in a second, show you how you can look at what courses you have to take if you haven't done so already. Um, talk to current students. That's really the best way. Um, join student organizations. Get hands on in those student organizations very early on. Explore those programs. And then there's a variety of exploratory career support opportunities for you. Um, your first year that you'll participate in to help familiarize you with what your degree program itself is. Um, like FSC 100, which is the intro to engineering course, ASU 101, which is like the intro to ASU course specific um, to Fulton programs. They do career exploration night where you'll have industry partners come in just to talk to you about what they do to help you figure out 
um, if you're in the right, right program for you. So there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, don't feel like you have to have it figured out right away because it's time for you to figure that out while you're here with us. Now, um, I mentioned these major maps. So if you're not familiar with a major map yet, I would encourage you to go look at yours. Um, this link that I have up in the corner, you can find them there as well as in that toolkit link Mike provided under the undergraduate page. So every degree program has a major map specific to that discipline, specific to the academic year that you start your program. Um, and so for all of you starting this fall, you would want the 2021, 2022 major map. You will have eight terms, so four years to complete your undergraduate degree in a traditional path. So I did see a question about that in there. Um, it would take eight terms of coursework. Um, and you can see in these major maps what courses are required. Uh, the critical courses are those that have an exclamation point. You'll see a total number of credits for that semester under hours. You'll see notes on the side. These are things that your academic advisors feel like are important for you to pay attention to in those terms. Um, and then you'll also notice that sometimes it has two courses in either or an or course that you have to take. I know a lot of you are coming in with AP credit, IB credit, dual enrollment. Um, and so basically what your advisor is going to do with you is sit down and go through a map. Theirs look a little bit different, but it's all the same content. Go through the map with you and take what, you've, what you're bringing in and show you how that will cancel out to different courses in that map, and then show you what your total time to complete that degree could be. Um, it's obviously up to you as an individual student how long it will take you, um, but I've seen students complete the undergraduate degree in three years, three and a half years, four years, four and a half or five, depending on what you're adding into your experience. If you're adding another discipline um, and you add it late or different types of experiences, maybe you do a co-op for a year and then you come back. And there's a lot of different ways to kind of, again, customize that experience. So again, I would encourage you to look at these major maps if you're trying to figure out you know, what those courses might be or if you're trying to compare programs um, and see what, what that looks like. Um, let's see, there was, I just wanna make sure there's no other questions about major maps. Um, what does the hour section mean on a major map? That's a good question. Um, so that's uh, the number of credits that a course is. Um, so you need to complete a, have a certain amount of credits each semester to be considered a full time student, sometimes um, to be qualified for scholarships. Our students tend to take more than that are required. Um, I've seen a lot of Fulton students that hover around as Emily again. Yes, Emily is one of the ones that takes way more credits than she needs to. Um, so you can take up to, I think, what is it, 18 or 19 credits without needing a petition and then anything above that to like 21, you need to get that approved by your degree program. Um, but some semesters you'll see like 14 credits or 15 credits. Um, and so these are built into your program. And then anything that you add on top of that, you can fill in um, in your major, in your curriculum map yourself to get to however many credits you need. It's also related to the number of hours um, spent each week um, in your courses. Um, so um, that's, they really do, they're really looking at it. It's not necessarily hours, but more as like credit. Mike, do you want to add anything to that? No, I just add that you mentioned critical tracking courses, those ones with the red marks next to them. That's a way for us to track uh, how our students are doing in particular courses that are very important to you staying on target for your four-year degree. So that would trigger a conversation with your advisor so we can get you back on track if need be. Our professors often are, mm -hmm. are submitting midterm grades too. So, so that allows us to sort of make sure that we help you along the way. And it's a, it's, it also helps us uh, down the road in terms of when you register for classes, it also informs our university as to uh, the need to add new sections of courses so we don't overpopulate uh, uh, certain certain courses that are very popular in engineering. Um, and it's about 40% of students who are going to change a major just across, you know, college stats. Um, I know students who have changed their major multiple times. It's because they're they're taking doing internships and research and in student organizations. And they're finding different pieces of engineering that they really like. Um, so I know students who are taking maybe FSC 100 um, and then maybe they're like an electrical engineering student, they take FSC 100 and they really like it. 
but they still kind of like the programming languages. And then they take uh, CSC EEE 120, which is dig digital design fundamentals, which is a combo computer science, computer systems engineering course and electrical engineering. And they take it and they love the entire year of it. Cause like half of it is very SIDSY, you know, computer science, computer systems, and half of it is very electrical more so. And you see certain students liking certain halves of it, but maybe you're a student that like both of it. So maybe you should look at computer systems engineering because it's a good combination of the different programs. Or maybe you go to um, a career fair or you're on Handshake, which I will explain. I saw that question in there. And you see a company that you really want to work for. You hear about this really great job. Um, and you like all those aspects of the job and you go to the website and they are primarily only hiring one type of engineer. And they're like, that's the engineering I want to do. And then you find your program that way. There are so many ways to find your discipline and really that's what your time is here for to help you find your fit. Um, and you definitely, definitely can do so. Um, I see. So if you have more specific and personal questions, Mike's email, my email and Nina's email will be at the end of the session. Um, so you can email us for that. We'll talk about the accelerated and fast track programs in a little bit. Um, I did see a Barrett question that has to do with credit. So I'm going to let Emily, because she did it the other day for me, I'm going to ask Emily to give her Barrett explanation again um, about, <laughs> she was laughing, but she did a very good job the other day. Um, so Emily, if you kind of want to walk through that Barrett piece, and then I don't know, Kai, if you want to jump in with your poly perspective, um, get you guys to answer that one for me. Sure. So Barrett is um, the Honors College at ASU, and it's basically how I described it in a different session this week was it's like the cherry on top of the engineering program or like the icing on the cake because it takes you that one extra step. And so there are two introductory classes you take as a freshman. Those are called the human event and those are more humanities focused, but they're really interdisciplinary. And it gives you a great chance to meet people in the honors college and think about things in a different way. And then um, the core set of credits is, um, there are lots of different ways to complete them. So you can do research, you can do an internship, um, my favorite way to do those is using honors contracts, and I actually use those with engineering classes. So by doing an extra project or an extra homework assignment or an extra lab assignment or designing my own project, I can actually earn honors credit for um, an engineering class and just by working with a professor. It's really cool. And then you have to do the thesis, which is kind of like a capstone, but you can do the thesis or create a project on anything you want. And typically that's done as a senior or a junior, depending on what you would like to do. Kai, do you want to add anything? Yeah, so Barrett is a way for you to get a more personalized college experience, especially in like big classes because you get to work more one-on-one -on -one with your instructors if you're doing something like an honors project or research project with them and it's just like a great way to meet people both in your program and outside of your program in a more condensed community outside of just the Fulton community or just the ASU community and it's just like a great way to build on your relationships and get great connections later on and I agree it's definitely the cherry on top you get couple extra benefits out of it but yeah awesome so um there's a couple other i saw a couple of barrett questions in there we might save those for later for you guys to kind of talk about that because i know they're also related to gcsp so we'll touch back with that um but this is the time to talk about accelerated paths at asu so i saw some questions about fast track plus one accelerated paths it's all the same um, and so this is our accelerated website, um, but every degree program offered within the Fulton Schools does have a plus one program. And so I'm going to start at the beginning of this map um, with the start first arrow and kind of work my way through because some students might be in different areas and different have different um, familiarity with different things on here. So um, what you see first, it says register for EFT program, complete ASU EFT classes while in high school. So basically those are just college level courses. Here at ASU and the Fulton Schools, we offer engineering fast track. There are ASU courses that are offered online to students um, in high school. They cost $25 to take the course. And then um, if you complete the course with a C or above and you want that converted to an ASU college level transcript, um, then you would pay the full course fee. There's no math prerequisites. There is no placement test for um, engineering fast track, you might also see them as universal learner courses um, on the ESU website. There's everything from the introduction to engineering, 
to history. Uh, the Grand Challenge Scholars intro class actually is in there too, all sorts of different classes. So yes, technically right now, all of you could take them. You could take them in the summer before you come, but once you start at ASU in the fall, um, you would no longer be eligible for your engineering fast track. But I know there's probably quite a few of you who have dual enrollment, AP, IB credits um, while you're in high school. It's really important that you do connect with your academic advisors um, to talk about those courses, um, or if you're deciding to take anything over the summer before you come to ASU, to make sure you're taking the right classes that will fulfill your major math at the right level. So what I mean by that is we require uh, calculus for engineers for quite a few of our degree programs. It's a high, higher level of math. Um, so we want to make sure our students are taking that. Um, same thing with physics. We take university physics. And then some degree programs require certain combinations of chemistry courses. Um, and so that's why it's just really important to participate in our programming and connect with your advisors. Um, I'm going to talk about the new student experience later and show you how to schedule and talk about how you can schedule that appointment, that college session. Um, and so that's just something to, to kind of always keep in the back of your mind is there are some steps that you need to take. But you want to make sure that they know all the courses that you're taking, all the tests, AP tests and your test scores, so they can make sure that you're not having to duplicate any credits that you've already completed. You've all, um, or the majority of you, I think, have all been admitted to ASU. So you've already met that step. And you're a transfer student who's in here and you've been admitted. You've done that step. We want you to graduate from high school, complete your AA, or if you're a transfer student, you can come whenever you would like, actually. Um, we'll always uh, welcome you to ASU. Um, and then when you come to ASU, then you can start working with your advisor on this accelerated time to complete your undergraduate degree, accelerated time to complete a master's degree, if that's something that you're interested in. Um, and so if you are a student who wants to complete your undergraduate degree in less than four years, that's definitely something you want to connect with your advisor about during your college sessions. Um, it usually requires coming in with credit or taking summer courses or taking again kind of like I mentioned before more credits than are required to complete your degree in our courses you will find that they do stack on top of each other so to complete this one the course C you have to have completed courses A and B before you get to C and so you'll see that series work through in all of the major maps um, and so that's why it's really important that you work with an academic advisor. But it is possible to complete it in less than four years if you do bring in credits or take additional courses and things like that. That's what we call a three or three plus one. Um, on our accelerated website, you'll see a three plus one page. It does show you how we accept dual enrollment, APs, IBs, engineering fast track courses and credits um, towards a bunch of our degree programs. I think there's about 20 that are mapped in there. That's something you want to look at. Um, but at this point, the majority of you are admitted students, so you'll already work through that uh, with your academic advisors. Now, say that you are somebody who not, is interested in completing a master's in less time than a traditional master's, which is anywhere from a year and a half. In Fulton, it's a year and a half to two years, depending on the program. Um, we have what we call the four plus one, or the three plus one, so that plus one program. So if you think back, actually, if you think back to this major map, so when you hit term six, you'll look over in this note section and it will say apply to the accelerated program, apply to the plus one program. That's when you can apply to the plus one program. You don't apply before. You apply when you hit term six. Um, each of the degree programs have different requirements, but generally it's that you have to have been taking all the courses in your map up, to, up through term six. You have the required GPA that the plus one program requires and usually some recommendations from teachers, faculty, staff at ASU um, in your degree program. As long as you're admitted into the plus one, then um, your term seven and eight, so your last year of your undergraduate program, there are a certain number of courses you will take that will count as both undergraduate level coursework and graduate level coursework. It's anywhere from nine to 12 credits. It's not more credits, it's just that they, um, are double counted and they are higher level courses. So they're going to be 500 level courses that you might not be able to take if you um, were not in the plus one program. So you complete your undergraduate degree that last year you've taken nine to 12 credits of graduate level coursework. You graduate as an undergraduate student. You come back for one more year to complete your master's, to complete the plus one. So it shaves anywhere from a semester to a year off. Um, we do not require our students in Fulton uh, in the plus one path to take the GRE, which is the graduate level exam. So that saves time and money. And who wants to take another test? Not me. 
Um, and it also um, is a great backup option for students who are still trying to figure out what they want to do when they graduate. Um, there is no penalty for doing applying to the plus one, doing that undergraduate year of higher level coursework, and then deciding, you know what, I want to do a full PhD, or I got my dream job and I want to go work there, or you know, I, I applied to medical school and I actually got in on the first try, so I'm going to do that instead. There is no penalty for you. So it is a great plan and kind of back option to, to consider for yourself while you are working through your time. And again, for the plus ones, you don't have to worry about any of that until you come to ASU um, and until you've started at ASU. Mm -hmm. So I think, did I answer all the plus one questions, Mike? Oh. Yeah, I just was gonna add, um, this, this would be a very important um, uh, website uh, to completely understand in terms of your future in industry or your future if you eventually wanna get a, a, a PhD. Master's degrees are very much valued in engineering industry. Uh, you are uh, better paid for having one. You frequently are able to move uh, in industry uh, a lot easier into different areas. Uh, if you have one, um, they usually understand that you've done uh, research as part of that. So um, it's it's a it's a it's a really important step that you ought to consider. And I know we're throwing it throwing all this at you very early. You're just leaving high school, and we're already telling you to get a master's degree. But I can tell you, in engineering it can really make a difference um, in your future. So take a, take a close look. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to answer a couple of these questions right now. So there's a question about when you have to make your decision to ASU. Uh, May 1st is the ideal like last deadline. We do encourage you as soon as you decide to come to enroll, um, you can do so in your My ASU account under the submit my enrollment deposit. And the reason why we encourage you to do it sooner rather than later is for a few reasons. One is housing. Um, our students are expected to live on campus. I think I have a slide about that in a little bit later, but to get your choice in housing um, before they are full or um, your desired choice in housing, you wanna make sure that you register early um, if you have a specific schedule that you'd like to keep. Um, so what I mean by that is a lot of our students work while they're um, going to school or they commute because they can't live on campus. Um, and so if you would like to coordinate your courses a specific way, um, the earlier that you get registered, the better, um, and work with that with your academic advisor. Um, technically, you can you know, submit your enrollment deposit you know, as late as July, but then you're kind of putting yourself at a disadvantage for course enrollment um, and E2, housing um, and all those other resources and things that open up for students once they do submit an enrollment deposit. Um, I'm gonna cover student support, uh, try to breeze through that a little bit. Um, so, you know, something that you might have heard touched on a little bit um, that we're very proud of um, and is our sense of community here at ASC within the Fulton Schools and within the Sun Devil community. Um, just by becoming part of, of ASU, you automatically already have these three levels of community for you. Um, so you should have received a welcome email and a letter from ASU. You should have seen a welcome email and a letter from the Fulton Schools of Engineering and our Dean. You should have received a welcome letter from your School of Engineering. Um, you are in Barrett the Honors College. You got a letter from Barrett the Honors College in an email. You're in Grand Challenge Scholars. You got a welcome from the Grand Challenge Scholars Program. Um, so these layers are here for you to, again, really customize that experience, build that community around yourself that you're interested in. They're so easy to join. These three on the slide, you automatically get us, whether you want us or not, you get us. Um, and then you get to join in on all the others. So like all our ambassadors today, they have a layer that is Fulton Ambassadors. They have Loving Nina as their academic advisor. Um, they have events. They are outreach. Um, to the outward facing community as well, but they have their own programming and um, student support just for our for those ambassadors as well. Um, another great example of this would be career services at ASU. Uh, so ASU has its own career services team that serves all Sun Devils and alumni. Then you have the Fulton Schools, which has our own career services uh, unit that's unique to us. Um, and it serves our students and alumni. Then your School of Engineering. So if you think back to that six school slides, maybe you got an email or a letter from SEMPTI or SIDSI, Poly, Poly School. Um, they also have career support for you. So anything from their own career fairs to info sessions to grad app workshops. Um, your academic advisor is a great resource for you. Your faculty are a huge resource for you. 
Um, and so then on top of those three, again, say you're in Barrett the Honors College, they have career support. Um, then maybe you join Society of Automotive Engineers and they have an industry component and in sponsorships as part of their program. And then maybe you join a professional society, uh, whether um, in, AS, in Fulton, uh, we do have our own professional organizations and a few Greek um, orgs, or maybe just ASU proper, you know, nationwide Greek organizations. They have all their own um, networking components. And so you can see how you can build these different layers and communities for yourself that will intersect and will also make it feel um, like a smaller community within a community and within another community for you, um, so that you have all of these different resources available to you. I saw a question about how easy is it to join a community? Again, there's three that you automatically get, whether you want us or not, and then you get to join all the other ones um, on top of that. And one thing that you'll get every week on Tuesdays is an email called Inner Circle, and I bet you there's at least one ambassador here who didn't read it today, but um, you get so used to getting it, you get it every week, um, and it has information um, all across ASU and the Fulton Schools of how to connect different opportunities um, and things like that. Because our goal really is to make sure you're getting more than just a degree. You need hands-on experience outside of just your academic coursework. Um, you need leadership experience and mentorship experience, public speaking, um, internships, research experience, to make sure that you are not just successful as a student at ASU in the Fulton Schools, but as a graduate. We want you to go to interviews for internships and research positions and graduate school and jobs, and you be the most uh, competitive applicant to have the you know, resume that is completely full of all these different ways that you have gotten these skills and experiences to be the best candidate and to be job ready or research ready for that program. So if you go to this customized website, um, it's actually a mapping tool where you can go through four years at ASU and kind of pick and choose different types of Fulton programs you're interested in. Um, and see what it might be like, um, what your time might be like at ASU. And when you hold that customized map up next to your major map with your coursework, you get a really good picture of what four years at ASU and in the Fulton Schools would look like for you. Um, we also have a video that is on um, that toolkit website that Mike provided and our website um, for webinars. It's called We Are the Fulton Schools and it goes through this idea of getting more than just a degree and all the things that I kind of barely touch on today, it goes on those in more detail with some of our students and our deans um, in that video. Um, so I'll let the students kind of talk a little bit more about some of those other programs, um, but student support is a huge component of um, the Fulton Schools of Engineering. So you'll hear about Homework Zero um, and your new student experience, E2, ASU 101. You have your academic advisors, you have Fulton Tutoring Centers that are our students who are um, current students and who are getting paid to be tutors. They've gotten a B or higher in the courses they've taken and it's free tutoring for you um, across both Tempe and Poly and online. ASU has tutoring services. We have a lot of programs built around the residential communities um, and student success nights and things to help you academically and socially, you know, get connected to your peers. Um, campus safety is a huge, huge piece um, and is very important to us. So there's everything from the Lift Safe app, which all parents and students should have on their phone, um, to the safety escort service, um, where they will come pick you up in a golf cart um, if you need a ride um, at night um, on campus, even though it is very well lit. Um, if you're walking by yourself, sometimes some students prefer an escort. Um, and Tempe Police, Poly um, has campus police. Um, so there's a variety of different safety nets that are built around there in the res communities, um, a variety of people checking in with you and, and kind of uh, making sure you're okay, everything from peer mentors in your res community to undergraduate teaching assistants in your classes and your academic advisors um, and ASU health services providing a lot of resources for you. So it's really important that um, we have all those built in. You'll hear about all of those in your new student experience as well. Um, We've mentioned our career center. Um, I saw some questions about internships and things like that. Um, and so, and Handshake. Um, and Handshake is the web portal that ASU uses to connect all of its students with employers. There are over 2,500 employers in Handshake. It's kind of like a LinkedIn, um, but it's where we have our students. You make a profile and you have your resume in there, and then you have employers in there who are posting jobs and also recruiting students through the student profiles. Um, there's info sessions that are posted through there. All of our career fairs this year due to COVID have been virtual 
um, through the Handshake portal. Um, and so it's a really great tool for you. You all who have been admitted have an ASU ID number, so you should be going in um, and to Handshake and making your account. And you can actually see what some of the jobs and things are posted right now. Um, you have peer career coaches. Um, we have students who do um, jobs or internships. Um, basically, all those employers are there. All those jobs are posted in there. They do career fairs. Um, they do coding workshops. They do interview prep workshops. Um, and they're all available for you to find them. There's also on this Career Center website, there is a link that says employers on campus. And you can see a full list of employers who have participated in our programming with our students through career fairs and such on our website. Um, this slide just is a snapshot. This is also on our, our website through the link that Mike has provided. Um, but these are self-reported student data on the um, top employers. Amazon is a huge partner at ASU, so it's no surprise that we have a lot of students that work there. Um, and some average salaries and percentages of students who are employed within six months of graduation or have gone on to continuing education. You see an overlap in the math that, that those percentages are right even though it's more than 100%. And it's because some of our students will go on um, to a job that will pay for them to complete their graduate program while they're there, which is a really cool opportunity. Um, so if you have any other specific um, industry um, questions, feel free to drop us in. I do see one about programs taught by industry professionals or just graduate students. So um, our courses are taught by our faculty. We do have industry partners who do teach some courses as well, or who were in industry and are now faculty. Um, so there's a wide variety of different faculty. We are a tier one research institution. So a lot of our faculty on campus are researchers, um, whether on campus or in places like the Mayo Clinic, um, or they work with TGen and a bunch of different um, companies and things like that too. Um, Mike, do you want to talk about how Phoenix and Arizona is great for internships and jobs? This is one Mike always. Yeah, I think we're so, you know, looking at the earlier slide where everybody was kind of pointing out where they're from in the country, you can imagine, uh, especially in areas where there's a, a large city like LA, San Francisco, some areas of the Midwest and Northeast. Um, when you look at some of those uh, large metropolitan areas, we're comparable in the sense that we're the fifth largest metropolitan area in the country. Um, yet what's different about us is that we are the only research institution within the Phoenix metropolitan area. Um, and that's why we've expanded into these uh, uh, different campus locations. It's given us a bigger footprint in the Valley so that we can offer higher education to all the students that want it in Arizona and outside of Arizona um, and have enough resources to do it. So, but, but, but what that allows our faculty and our students to do is our faculty can engage with uh, uh, engage in research with all the local industries and particularly in the East Valley where we have our Tempe campus and Polytechnic campus where our programs are located, uh, our faculty can uh, associate with, with great companies that you see um, in the news all the time, the Intels, the Boeings, um, you know, and, and uh, Honeywells and all those different areas. So our, our, our faculty connect and then our students connect through internships and other opportunities uh, to do research. So it's, it's kind of a special place for engineering and we have a, a unique presence in, in being the only research institution in, in that metro area. So very, very good. Those of you that are interested in all these new uh, alternative energy um, um, opportunities that are coming about, um, uh, uh, Lucid and Nicola have have have, have opened um, manufacturing plants here that are that are that are local to our area, and uh, so if you have those kinds of interests, I mean that stuff is growing really fast. Those of you in mechanical or automotive engineering, we have sites all over the state where we do um, testing in the heat with all the new designs with new automobiles. Uh, new electric cars. So it's a, it's, a, it's a very cool place for engineering in general. So that's, uh, that, I think that's what Kaylee wanted me to point out. Good job. <laughs> good, yeah, you covered it. Um, so I want to quickly cover uh, some next steps because I know there's, I've, I've gotten a few calls this week just about this in general. So um, all of you should be in your My ASU at some point 
today, this week, tomorrow, whatever it is. Um, your My ASU account is where all of your student information is held, early decisions, financial aid information, next steps, tasks, all of that. Parents can only act once a student submits an enrollment deposit. We cannot provide student information to anyone other than the student. So if parents are calling and emailing and asking about student information and they are not a guest on their student's profile, we cannot provide you that information. So um, on the ASU website, if you just type in ASU guest permissions, you also probably have it in a couple emails um, and some stuff from us too. Um, go in um, and you can add your parents as guests or, and then we can talk to them about your account and your financial aid and things like that. Um, in your My ASU, once you submit an enrollment deposit or just de delay your enrollment deposit, depending on um, you know, what you qualify for, then you will see your new student experience um, will pop up. You will also see things like register for a college session and register for housing. So your new student experience is kind of what you know orientation used to be. So you have these four modules. The students are supposed to be completing these modules, not the parents. The students complete these modules. Some of them they can do together with their parents. Um, the number three is the live session that you need to register for. So in your My ASU account, you'll see it as an option to register for the course planning college session, or you can just start your My ASU tasks. And when you're in ASU, one, ASU Essentials number one, um, that's where we'll also prompt you to do so. Same thing with housing. It is a task, but it's also in here in your new student experience. There are some other things in here um, in your new student experience that are important that you complete before step three, which include for those students who have additional coursework, APs, dual enrollments, IBs, you actually have to incorporate those and submit them in this form. Um, so we would encourage you to do that as well. Um, and um, through this academic advising and course planning session is where um, they will go over your uh, courses with you and register you for courses. If you have attended this and you have additional questions, one-on-one -on -one questions for your academic advisor, just email your academic advisor or set up an appointment with them. You can do that through your My ASU account or through the ASU um, Fulton Advisor website, which is advising.engineering.asu.edu. Easier if you go through your My ASU, but you can also go to that other website um, and you can register for an appointment with your advisor that way. Um, so again, if you need additional, um, you have additional questions related to your courses and your registration and you've already attended session three and you have more questions, just go back to your academic advisor, schedule that appointment, email them, and they can help you with it that way. And if that doesn't work for some whatever reason, you can email Mike and I and we'll help you walk through that. We just can't help with the course selection or course registration because we're not advisors. Um, let's see. Oh, so this is just talking about housing. Um, as we mentioned, we expect our students to live on campus. Barrett expects the first two years. Um, at the Tempe campus, if you are not a Barrett student, you would, um, right now you would live in Tooker. That's what's open for registration. There is a Tooker virtual 360 tour on our website. Um, we can't tour inside of Tooker right now because of COVID, but if you will come on our campus tour, tour, we do walk you over there and kind of around the building and you can see actually inside a lot of the spaces. Um, if you're at the Polytechnic campus, our students right now live in Century Hall. Um, if you are a Barrett student at Poly, you actually live in Lantana Hall, which is a brand new res community that just opened this fall. Um, upperclassmen also live there too. And then if you're at the Tempe campus, um, the Barrett community is on the southeast portion of campus. Um, there's um, they're not doing in-person tours right now, but they do have videos and actually they do have sessions during admitted student week as well. Um, we just were asking if anybody was planning to live on campus or off campus. If you have questions about how off campus, how to file that exemption, you just go through the housing portal and then you just say that you need to live off campus and it will walk you through how to do that. Um, but you will have peer mentors um, that are assigned to you, whether you're on campus or off campus to help connect you back to the residential community. So scholarship questions on there. Um, Fulton scholarships don't get posted until early to mid April. Um, so for those of you who did apply for some of our scholarships, the portal was open November 1 through February 1st, and then they go to committee. You know, they have to go through all of them, review who's eligible, and then they all get reviewed um, by staff, um, donors, faculty. Um, and so they will not get posted to your accounts or you won't be notified that you were awarded a winner um, until till April. Nikki's email and phone number are on this slide. They're also on the websites, the toolkits website Mike provided. 
Um, we'll link you to scholarships. So if you have questions, you can always email or call Nikki's team um, and they would be able to answer those questions for you. Um, our scholarships open up every year, both the ASU and the Fulton scholarships that you can apply for at these two links. They usually open around October. Fulton ones open early November, and then they all usually close in early February. Um, I know there were a couple that were open until about a week ago or early this week for, for ASU, uh, but we encourage you to apply every year um, for new scholarships. If you're an international student, there is a website for you um, here for international student information. Um, and then again, you can always contact Nikki's team. We do have some other sessions available um, throughout the rest of this week. These QR codes would link you there. I can always jump back to that. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to our ambassadors to reintroduce themselves and just talk a little bit about these um, extra programs. Hi everyone, again. Um, I'd like to start just by going back to something Kaylee already said, those layers of communities, that's the whole reason I decided to come to ASU and I have not regretted that decision since. Um, so looking at having the Fulton community, it has all the benefits of a bigger school like access to funding, access to research opportunities, lots of student organizations and fun people to meet. And then you have those smaller communities like the Grand Challenges Scholars Program and like Engineering Projects and Community Service and the other orgs that are on my slide as well. Um, so GCSP, I know there was a question about it, so I'd like to touch on it. It is, um, it enables students to bring together a diverse collection of experiences into one cohesive path that relates to one theme area. So the four theme areas are sustainability and joy of living, which is lots of space travel and fun scientific discovery stuff and security and health. And so basically you get to take one of those themes and say, what problems do I wanna solve? And then create your own path within the program. So very, very cool, totally different opportunity than Barrett, not better or worse, just different. And I'm one of the GCSP student leaders. So if you want more information, reach out to Kaylee, she can give me my email and I'd be happy to answer further questions. And then the other one that I really want to touch on quickly is EPICS, which is Engineering Projects and Community Service. It gives students the opportunity to work on real world projects with community partners. And so that's an invaluable experience for engineering students. So those two are just um, some of the things that make ASU pop. So I definitely noticed some of the Barrett questions. I know that there's some differences between Tempe and Poly Barrett because they're they're different, but they're the same in a way. And like the, Barrett is doing their own information sessions where you can get a better in-depth look at like what the classes look like and requirements and some of the extra benefits you can get and what they kind of expect out of you and what you can get out of them in return. So I definitely suggest if you're interested in Barrett at all, whether or not you want to apply for it or not, you should definitely attend one of those sessions and you get a great overview of that. Um, personally, I'm more of an aviation student. So it's a little different from engineering, but um, I've gotten to meet a bunch of cool engineers and like, well, we might not be taking the same classes. They can help me in like physics because I'm not good at physics. And I just get to meet a bunch of different people from different majors. And like, it's a great benefit being in all of these different communities, whether or not you share a lot of stuff in common with the other people. And it's just a great way to get involved being part of different communities. Okay, uh, I guess to wrap things up on the student ends of things. Um, I do wanna talk a little bit about Barrett, just one final thing. Um, as a junior, I am just now starting the thesis process, which was brought up very briefly beforehand, but that's another great way to kind of get uh, research experience when you're, um, sorry, to kind of find a research lab when you're here on campus uh, throughout your four years. And to, to touch on research a little bit more, I am working in two research labs right now, which is a huge um, <laughs> time sink, but I love it. Uh, and I started that my freshman year through this uh, ASU 101 class, which is basically an introduction to college at ASU and what it's like and how you should get involved. And one of my professors, or yeah, a professor in my school came in to speak and I just reached out to him really quickly. Uh, and I've been doing research with him for three years now through FURY, which is a way to 
get paid for doing research and also to have uh, the opportunity to present your findings in a symposium. And I'm also a founder of a Fulton student organization here on campus, which I got started last semester. So it's really easy to branch out and find spaces for what you're interested in, even if there's not like a dedicated major or minor. There are resources in abundance here at ASU, which is the main reason I chose it because I could not find another university that allowed me to branch out to do exactly what I want to do. Um, and I'm going to piggyback on her research thing really fast. There is a Fulton research session that is offered through Admitted Student Day. It's um, Fury and the Grand Home Scholars Program staff are going to talk about opportunities through the structured research programs. And then kind of like, you know, Maggie mentioned, some students have an ASU 101 professor that they mesh with and they start doing research in that lab for the very first semester. It really just is up to what you're interested in. I know students who just search um, the faculty on our website um, and find faculty that they're interested in working with and just email them. Um, and then some faculty will bite and have you know spots open um, and you can start research that way. It's not built into your curriculum. That's, again, that's why you see you know, 14, 15 credits in your major maps. And then you can fit in research around that um, or you can add additional classes. It's definitely up to you um, as a student. But you can see, you know, all these different ways that our students are customizing and creating their own experience, you know, different majors and minors um, and things like that that you can do. Um, I see a question about weed out classes. So we're at engineering college. We have a lot of math and physics in that first year. Math alone is a weed out class. <laughs> so um, it's just, you know, some people do really well in math and some do not, and some do really well in physics and some do not. I um, mean, it's all about whether or not the student is going to persist in the program, if they're passionate about it, um, or if they find a program that has different math and physics requirements. Um, there are definitely some courses where you'll see that a student will realize, you know, this isn't the right program for me. There's a different discipline, kind of like I mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, CSE 120, EEE 120 can be that course for some students. I know physics too can be that course for some students. They realize there's a different piece of engineering that they would prefer, um, but we're not setting out to weed out our students. It's just college is different. And, and our engineering programs are academically challenging. And so it's up to the students on whether or not they want to accept the challenge and rise to the occasion and uh, persist in the programs. But I know um, my weed out class was organic chemistry for my program, which caused me to switch. I made it through the first semester with like an A and I hit the second semester and I like failed it. And that's when I said that medical school wasn't the right choice for me because I didn't want to take it again. So it's every student is going to be different. Um, but we want our students to be successful. We don't want them to fail. So we have so many things in place. Undergraduate teaching assistants like Maggie in your classes on top of grad teaching assistants and on faculty office hours and review sessions and free tutoring from ASU and free tutoring from Fulton and student success courses and sessions that are offered and academic advisors who are checking in with you um, throughout the semesters if you're not doing well um, on your GPA. So, you know, that's our goal is again, to make sure our students are successful and that they have the right fit and the right program for them. Um, I see a question about us matching scholarships. You are always free to contact financial aid at ASU and see if they will match scholarship those things are not held within the college, they're held within ASU. We are a public institution though. Um, and so we do offer scholarships students can apply for. And then we have the New American University scholarships that you are eligible for based on merit. I saw a question about that. How do you claim it? Just go into your financial aid and look at your finances tab and you have steps in there um, and it should offer you the option to accept it um, if you're going to accept that scholarship. Um, we are at seven minutes. Um, so feel free if you need to, you know, jump out or jump into another session or have dinner, you know, that's totally fine. Again, this is recorded. Um, I'm going to let Mike um, talk a little bit about the number, the sizes of classes, because um, I feel like I've been talking like the whole time. Yeah. Um, and then um, I'm going to see, I was going to assign someone. Um, aviation already had its webinar, Nina, not if I'm correct. Yes. Um, but it's recorded and it will be posted um, online. But if you want to come down for a tour, there are tours of the aviation um, facilities on Mondays and Fridays at 10, registration required. And yeah, Mike, do you want to talk about sizes? 
Yeah, it's it's going to it's going to vary like so if you're an incoming freshman and you didn't have a lot of uh, APIB dual enrollment coming in, you know, your 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 English class, your composition class uh, for general studies in that first semester will look very much like in the 20s, so you're a very small class there. Your intro to engineering course uh, 35 to 40 max, uh, so very small uh, there. Where you'll get into larger classes will be in like uh, physics and chemistry in a very at a very popular time, say 9, 15, 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, and these aren't just courses that engineers are taking perhaps, but our other, other programs on campus that are in, in STEM are taking those courses as well. So the lecture hall might be quite large in the hundreds. Um, where you're meeting Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, maybe for an hour, but then your labs will be very small. They'll be, you know, they'll be in the 20s for your labs, uh, where you'll meet once a week, and then usually there's a recitation where you're meeting separately uh, in very small groups. So, so um, it, it'll vary a little bit in those first two years. Um, some of it's dependent on what time you you, you want to take your classes. Um, but as you move into your junior and senior year, you'll start to see things very much narrow down because you're taking classes just with your group of students in your particular major um, and does vary too in terms of the campus location. Our average class size, I think right now is, is uh, in terms of faculty to student ratio is, is, is really good for a university our size. I think it's under uh, one to 32 or something like that. So. We're, we do a really good job for a large university to make sure our students are getting the experience that they deserve. So I appreciate that. The other thing about, I, I, you know, Kaylee was talking about the, this, this weed out sort of, uh, we've re done a really good job with retention for, for freshmen moving on to their sophomore year over the last 10 years or so. And part of that is that we've um, done things like with our, with our calculus courses for our engineers, you know, we have general calculus at the university, but we have calculus for engineers now that our engineers take. So the problem solving is around engineering problems. Um, so maybe more meaningful to, to students pursuing that degree. Uh, but we're named the Ira A. Fulton Schools of Engineering for a reason. Ira A. Fulton gave us a ton of uh, resources many years back and he said he wanted that money devoted to things that happen to our students outside of the classroom. Some of that's experiential learning, but much of it is, uh, is meant to provide support services to our students um, that, that his, his donations have, are covering the cost of. So um, uh, we're, we're really proud of that, uh, especially for our size. So um, uh, Kaylee, I, I think that's that's all I have to say. Okay, um, E2 will be virtual this year. Um, so I know I just pulled the list for the postcards. So you'll be getting a postcard maybe by the end of this week, maybe early next week um, if you're a domestic student, um, but they also will start sending out emails. Um, I think, or actually maybe it's coming out the week of the first. Maybe that's right. You'll start getting things the week of the first about E2 being virtual. Um, and so you'll learn about it too in your college session, session three. Um, so if you look on the ASU website, the ASU COVID website, um, Michael Crow did release an announcement um, that ASU is planning to return to learning mode one, which is in-person courses for fall 2021. And we are so excited. Mm -hmm. um, our students are excited, we're excited. Um, so that's the plan and um, students, once you submit an enrollment deposit and you start kind of getting funneled into that enrolled student status, you will start getting those types of emails um, from, from Dr. Crow and the provost um, provosts as well. Um, but yes, learning mode one, um, it's gonna be so great. Um, let's see, we talked about, we did answer the question about research. There is a research session. It is very easy for students uh, to get uh, access to research. Um, Handshake is only for uh, career support. It's not, from my understanding, it is not like a LinkedIn or a Slack or something where you communicate with other students. Right now you should be or could be using devil to devil 
um, which are the Slack channels and the communication channels they've set up for incoming students where you can connect with other incoming Fulton and ASU students and current students. So there are upperclassmen who are in those channels with you answering questions and things like that. So um, if you've ever seen something come through an email that says devil to devil or even in text, opt into it and you can connect with other students. Um, otherwise, we use Slack um, for our student orgs and things like that. And then, you know, some students use like Discord and all sorts of other things too. Programming languages and the computer science major, look at your major map and you can see all the classes and then you can see all the tech electives and the upper um, division courses that might have other programming languages as well. But within your first year, I think you do C++ and Java. Um, those are like your first courses um, that you'll take in the programming languages. Um, there's so, a really good, uh, uh, Kaylee's got a really good web seminar with our computer okay. science professor. Uh, so that that link I sent earlier, check out the uh, check out that webinar with CS. I don't know if we have any more of these admitted student sessions with. He is. He's doing the computer science. The um, I think it's called Fulton Schools Explores um, CIDSI, the computing programs. Um, Dr. Ryan Muth will be uh, doing a session for all of you. Um, I, might, I think I'm on that one, but that's I think it's in April. Um, but if you go to that admitted student link, um, for those of you that are still in here, if you see this QR code on my slide and you want us a t-shirt, free swag from Fulton, go ahead and fill out that form. We'll send you something. How can you access the club's offer to ASU? It's their ASU um, Sun Devil Sync um, on the ASU website, or the Fulton Schools of Engineering has its own Fulton Schools FSO's website as well. Um, full ambassadors, thank you for joining us. Feel free if you need to go to bounce out. We appreciate you. If you'd like to connect with one of our ambassadors, please email our friend Nina Loman. Her email is right here on the screen and she can connect you with our ambassadors. Um, so if you need a tour, you want to go to engineering.asu.edu forward slash visit. And then it says request an on-campus tour. And there is a link um, that will take you to requesting an on-campus tour with our team. Um, there's a research session we'd encourage you to attend. Um, there was an e &I session, entrepreneurship session earlier today, um, that'll be recorded. Feel free to join us for anything in the near future or just email us if you have specific questions or need help connecting. Um, with that, we really do hope that we see all of you this fall on campus. Um, feel free to connect with us um, outside of that and go Devils. Mm -hmm. Used to it, Sun Devils. <laughs>